first of all, I want to thank all the organizers of this very important event. This is really an historic event, bringing these issues together in Berkeley uh, for the survival of not just the people of Fukushima, the people of the world. This is what we're talking about, the survival of the world. And it's frightening here that in the midst of this tremendous urgent emergency, really, to, to try to stop this plant from blowing up, and it nearly blew up as a result of this typhoon that was going through Japan. That could have been at Fukushima. That could have destroyed and, and caused us a, a mass uh, combustible explosion, which was a dirty bomb. You know, the, the, the media talks about dirty bombs, dirty nuclear bombs. They've dropped that language. They don't talk about dirty nuclear bombs anymore because people might make the connection. There's a dirty nuclear bomb that went off, and it was made by the United States. It was made by General Electric, and there are many potential dirty nuclear bombs all over this country and all over this world that people face. They don't want to make those connections because this is a dirty bomb that threatens the people of the world, not just in Japan, but all over the world. And our committee, is, uh, the No Nukes Action Committee, was established to link up the people of the United States with the people of Japan. We helped arrange to bring some Japanese activists from Fukushima here, which was very important in setting up a California network and bringing us all together, because we have to unite. Whatever differences we have, we have to unite together to get our word out, to get our message out in solidarity. Uh, this is a matter of survival, and it's a matter of uniting everyone. So uh, the main experience of the Japanese, this was not done by Japan. This did not start in Japan. It started in the United States. It was organized in the United States by Ronald Reagan and the militarists here who forced Japan to take these nuclear plants. They did not want these nuclear plants. People, the fishermen, the people, the farmers, they did not want nuclear plants. They were bribed. They were pressurized. And they continue to be repressed today when they try to tell the truth. And we're going to have Professor Shimoji later tonight talking about the fact that people who leaflet to try to get information out to the Japanese people are arrested and beaten, are jailed, and nobody hears about it. Nobody hears about it, it's a secret. It's a secret. Of course, people here are also killed and beaten every day in the streets of Oakland and Berkeley and all over this country, so it's not unique to Japan, it's happening all over the world. But this repression of political uh, information, of scientific information, is dangerous. It's actually criminal what they're doing. The Japanese government lied to the people of Japan. They, they would not even tell them where the, the plume was going. And mothers walked into the plume with their children, trying to save their children. And their children now have cancer. So there's, we're talking about criminality of a government, not just a government in Japan, but a government here. Uh, Secretary Clinton had a trip to Japan, and she was going to tell them to reopen all the plants. I mean, can you imagine this? Reopen all the plants on the ring of fire. This is what Japan should do now. And at the same time that the United States is telling them to reopen the plants, the United States is calling for further militarization. More bases in Asia, more bases in Jeju and all over the, all over the world. When people here are dying in the street, don't have health care. And tomorrow, I don't know if everyone has heard, the board of directors of BART and the government are forcing the BART workers to go on strike. And they're telling them, get this, they're telling the BART workers they have to pay, uh, take a pay cut to pay for new trains. Can you imagine that? Telling workers that they have to take a pay cut to pay for new trains when you have more billionaires growing in California than ever? When all these developers and speculators are making money from the development of BART? When, when a new BART station comes up, all this profit comes up? So wh what are we talking about? We are talking really about a system gone wild. They talk about a system gone wild. It's a system gone wild. That's what has happened to our society and to the world, and it threatens the world, and that's why they are quibbling. They are quibbling about the amount of money it takes to clean up Fukushima. How can you quibble about something that threatens the destruction of Japan, the destruction of the world? It shows that this system is a system problem we're confronting. It's not bad people. It's not bad individuals. It's, it's not bad companies. It's a system, and this is what we have to challenge uh, come to our rally. We're going to have an educational conference on Saturday at San Francisco State, Burke Hall, number one. And also, we are continuing the effort at the Japanese consulate to take action on a monthly basis to educate people and challenge the Japanese government that they have to evacuate the children and families of Fukushima. They have to stop pretending they can 
overcome radiation, which they say that they can do. You can overcome radiation. The government says that. Politicians say that. You can overcome radiation. Where does that come from? Where does that idea come from? I mean, it's madness. And that you can decontaminate Fukushima by rubbing, by cleaning off the lower level of the soil, top level of the soil, and rubbing the roofs, and you've decontaminated. That's their plan. And they spent billions of dollars on that. The money has to go to shut that plant down, to, to secure it. The money has to go to evacuate the children and the, and the families. And we have to end nuclear power. We have to save this country and the world. Thank you very much. Thank you.